Welcome to The Conspiracy Show. My name is Richard Serrett. Around the world, tens of thousands of people insist they are being stalked, harassed, and even tortured by directed energy weapons and electronic devices. But are these otherwise ordinary men and women the victims of some mind control experiment, or are they simply losing their minds? Tonight, we'll hear from two alleged victims of electronic harassment who'll present their best evidence. And we'll also speak with a skeptic who insists these individuals, while well-meaning and sincere, are misguided and that no such mind control experiment exists. Our mission is to investigate these claims and follow the truth, wherever it may lead. It's time to redefine reality. Genetic enigma or a human alien hybrid. That's how cynical I am now about the process. Is a stream of technology can detect weather patterns or it is like a Has been engineered by the Illuminati. There's no doubt. Marcia Lee is uh, with us here on The Conspiracy Show. Marcia, tell us about yourself. I live in New York City. I've had this apartment for almost 30 years, and I'm a victim of electronic harassment. For the uninitiated, what is electronic harassment? Electronic harassment takes several different forms. And in my case, there was a couple who were both deceased in this building under horrific circumstances. And when he moved into this building, he had wired this whole building with cameras all over the place for the man who owned the building at that time. And I heard him and his wife. And they said that I had to give up this apartment that I had to bring the key to the key to this apartment to their house, the key to my car, the key to my uh, little cottage in New Jersey, and I had to walk out of here with nothing and start my life all over again and just leave everything with them. If I didn't do that, they were going to turn off the electricity, do all kinds of things in this apartment, and. I would have no way of explaining this to people in any logical way. Derek Robinson is president of a human rights organization called Freedom from Covert Harassment and Surveillance. Derek, welcome to The Conspiracy Show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. What is electronic harassment? Uh, electronic harassment refers to um, victimization by a variety of technologies, uh, surveillance technologies as well as mind control technologies that are being used today uh, covertly. Tell me about your organization, FFCHS, Freedom from Covert Harassment and Surveillance. There are a variety of scenarios uh, that we are dealing with as a victim community. We are a support organization to those who find themselves victims of uh, mind control technologies and surveillance uh, technologies. Derek, are you personally a victim of electronic harassment or have you been in the past a victim? Uh, yes, I am, Richard. I am also. There is um, surveillance, 24-7 monitoring and surveillance, whether I'm at home or um, out in the community the voice to skull technology or the synthetic telepathy, also called the microwave hearing effect, uh, which is basically the projection of the human voice into one's mind. I receive that on a nightly basis, daily basis. Uh, there's also uh, mind reading technology that is being uh, utilized in my case. There's also other types of technologies that assault the human mind and body in a variety of ways that cause any number of effects from pain induction, nausea, dizziness, headaches, irritation, a number of assaults to the nervous system, irregular heartbeats. Sometimes it's sped up quite quickly, dramatically, or sometimes it's, it slows to a crawl, it almost stops. And uh, there are many instances where people have to be rushed to the emergency room because of these physical effects. Isolation is one of the main protocols. And once that individual is isolated, uh, they are often harassed further uh, to the point of what we see as, uh, as sometimes suicidal, even homicide.
type of electronic harassment you've just described is known as voice to skull torture. Explain a little bit about what that is in more detail. Once these people introduce themselves to you, when they start in with you, they um, rotate with each other and they speak to you 24 hours a day. Synthetic telepathy, that's when the human voice is, is broadcast into one's mind. They told me that they were gonna come up to fire escape you know, send somebody up to fire escape and that they were gonna break the window. And then I just had to leave the apartment. And that's how the whole thing started. I was totally, totally petrified. I don't doubt their sincerity at all. They are simply misunderstanding what they're experiencing. The problem is that there's no, there's no logical connection between a person's sincerity and their believability and the, the validity of their claims. When you first started to hear these voices, did you first think that perhaps there was something physically wrong with you, that perhaps these were auditory hallucinations? I thought that I didn't, I was thinking a lot of things. Once this starts, it never ends. The cast of characters might change, but you have this 24-7. Uh, Derek, forgive me, I have to ask, but what would you say to a skeptic who, who might suggest that, that you, perhaps other alleged victims, are suffering from some mental illness? How are we able to differentiate? Well, that's, uh, that's actually a very good question, uh, because a lot of the things that we complain about um, are symptoms. Uh, of mental illness, when you talk about hearing voices in one's mind, uh, if, you t if you say that to a psychiatrist, you're automatically diagnosed as uh, paranoid schizophrenic. So are they imagining uh, the, these symptoms? Uh, do they have some psychological disorder? When you're looking at many of these claims, essentially what you're seeing are very similar symptoms to uh, uh, paranoid schizophrenia, delusional, uh, various types of delusions. Which is why so many people uh, experience this and um, are kind of at a loss of what to do. They feel that they are um, losing their mind uh, and those around them that they explain this to feel the same way. I know that it isn't schizophrenia because it's, the voices are all directed towards one situation. And after a while, they were reading from a prepared script. Most people who have uh, who have these sorts of disorders, they're not drooling lunatics you see on film. They look like ordinary, everyday citizens. Uh, they look like you or me. They're, they're our neighbors, they're our family members. You find that your whole audience of people, your loyal friends, poo-poo everything because they don't think this is really happening. And it will only happen if you by yourself. Isolation is one of the main protocols. And once that individual is isolated, uh, they are often harassed further uh, to the point of what we see as, uh, as sometimes suicide or even homicide. And that's when people commit suicide or try to get help for a condition that most people don't understand. And what happens is they end up getting sedated and treated for a medical condition, which becomes a mental condition and it's actually just a form of harassment at the same time the harassers are laughing at the whole thing. The problem is that they're not providing evidence that we would need to verify their stories. They're just sort of saying, I have these symptoms um, and, and I think that this is happening to me. And when you ask them, you know, I, why do you think this is happening? Well, I don't know, or it's some, it's some conspiracy, or I'm just a victim, or, you know, they, they, they come up with some answer, but it's never, it's never a thing that, that brings a solution. What's the purpose of this? Are they trying to drive you crazy? Yes. It's after a while you start thinking, you know, this can't be a coincidence. This is so bizarre that wherever I'm going, this other person is going. David Lawson who is an investigator who actually went underground and observed these groups for about 13 years. He wrote a book called Cause Stalking. And basically he describes their, their methods and their purpose as the intention is to destroy the target. Ben, we, we know with a great deal of certainty that uh, the, the government and certain intelligence groups have targeted US citizens 
uh, for some sort of experimentation. So why couldn't the claims of these alleged victims be true? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, certainly um, I don't have any doubt at all that there is technology um, available that could mimic um, some of the complaints and symptoms uh, that some of these people are experiencing. Uh, this technology has been in development since the 70s when there was a first uh, demonstration by Joseph Sharp um, and his colleague and engineer Mark Grove. Um, they worked at the Walter Reed uh, Army Institute of Research. Yeah, didn't they do experiments back in the 50s? Yes, there. You know, it, se it seems pretty clear that there were uh, some uh, some experiments along the lines of mind control uh, in the 50s and in, in the 60s and, and they're on. The experiments that Jose Delgado was doing, you can see some of those on YouTube, that he was able to, uh, with a radio transmitter, control the actions of uh, a cat uh, to lick its fur, to, uh, to be aggressive. Uh, he even used the expression, he could use a cat like an electronic toy. That doesn't answer the question as to why, number one, they would be continuing to this day to operate on ordinary citizens with no particular motive. Why? Why are you so important that you think that there's a special branch of the CIA or another uh, another or clandestine group uh, that is that is doing this to you? I was trying to figure out why me. You know, everybody goes through this queen of self pity thing. Why me? What did I do? And what I thought about it's a strictly a business situation. What I figured out was that this guy next door had one of the things he screamed through the wall was that he used to work for them at one time in his in their electronics company. And he said, the woman is an idiot, but that guy is an electronic genius. So I said, oh my gosh, he has an electronic background. So I figured he hired them. And typically they say, well, you know, I, uh, I don't really know, or maybe they're experimenting on me, or I don't know because of course it's a conspiracy. I mean, ultimately that's always one of the answers is, you know, any time they don't have an answer for a question like that, they just say, well, it's a conspiracy, what do you expect? Why you, Derek? Why are you being targeted in this way? Uh, I was um, in the Navy from 75 to 82. And the last year of my enlistment was when um, uh, I started to be uh, surveilled. I worked at NSA at the time uh, for uh, the U.S. Navy. And uh, during this last year, I, came, I realized that I had come under surveillance by um, uh, this particular uh, organization. Um, and uh, I was hoping that after that year was up, after my enlistment was up, that all the harassment would end. However, it did not. And it has continued uh, since 1982 up until the present. So I realized that at that point that this was, I was not alone, and this was basically a huge area of the military covert uh, community that targets individuals in this country. So again, what were they after? Were they trying to drive you crazy? Were they trying to discredit you? Did you have some information that they wanted? Why you? Um, they originally uh, targeted me uh, while in the Navy under suspicion of uh, sexual orientation was really their original uh, idea. They had decided to continue that harassment. Around 2004 was when I found the, uh, the targeted community. So I realized that at that point that this was, I was not alone, and this was basically a huge area of the military covert uh, community that targets individuals in this country. There's countermeasures, but you have to go to a trained professional to find out what they are, so your situation is not hopeless. Um, yes, it's not a, uh, a norm of this business, but um, I do probably receive at least one call a month or electronic harassment or, or some, something to that effect. Um, it's really difficult to, to make out what's really going on with these, with these people. 
and uh, it definitely could be um, intentional, it could be real, and it could be from everyday sources that are, are around them, and, and I try to decipher that and figure that out over the phone with them. What sort of products could you offer them that might uh, help shield them from this remote covert harassment? Um, typically we, we find we have good results with uh, shielding paint that reflects 99.9% .9 of microwave radiation and radio waves, so that's a very effective solution. We also have shielding fabrics or cloths that, that people tend to make canopies out of and they can sleep underneath them and shield themselves from RF frequencies that way as well. Derek, how do you get relief from this electronic harassment torture? Do you employ some sort of a counter electronic measure? Um, I, um, I don't employ any, any type of uh, a methods. To, uh, you know, I'm, I'm okay. Um, basically, I'm trying to get the stalking, the surveillance to stop. And uh, the 24-7 uh, harassment, uh, the voices that I get at night, the access to our mental processes. How could we explain uh, these victims' claims that they're hearing voices inside their heads, assuming that they're not mentally ill? Yes, um, that is difficult for me to explain. Um, I, I truly believe the technology is available to do that. It's not a matter of any type of shielding, um, a method that would help that. Let's see, let's see what the You know what, it's off the scale. The signal's so high that it's going off the scale. Just from the effects of this microphone, or the, yeah, this, this remote microphone alone, it would cause somebody that's electrically sensitive to react severely and, um, and start going into their, the, the symptoms of you know, headaches, nausea, um, a confused state. What I would suggest is to look on the internet and find a private investigator who specializes in electronic harassment. And it just, all you have to do is Google electronic harassment. And there's lots of different companies all over the country that specialize in electronic harassment. Are there weapons and non-lethal weapons that are being developed by the military and law enforcement? Absolutely, I don't doubt that for a minute. They're, they're well known, you can, you, can, you can buy them yourself if you want. Derek, you're no longer in the Navy. You're no longer with the NSA. So why does this harassment, surveillance persist in your case? What are they after? Okay, uh, to personalize it, um, in my case, um, I can only extrapolate. You know, I can only guess at what the reasoning would be. However, um, it seems to be similar and and uh, seems to be a similar protocol to the other others who are also victimized, and that is basically to destroy the target's life, uh, socially, financially, any type of business ventures that they would uh, want to start, uh, everything that they would want to pursue in life, they would like to derail. Everything gets um, invaded. Um, what the reasoning is, I don't know, but I, uh, I do feel that they want to be there for the duration of their life. This is a lifetime venture for them. Um, and as I mentioned, their, their protocol in this particular situation is to drive the person uh, to self-destruction. More people are being singled out daily. More people are being targeted. Uh, in the U.S., in Canada, this is a worldwide scenario. In order to assess the case for covert electronic harassment presented by our two alleged victims tonight, we need to ask ourselves two questions. First, do these electronic devices and directed energy weapons exist? I believe the answer is yes. Secondly, have governments and intelligence groups 
demonstrated a willingness to target their own citizens for covert experimentation, sometimes resulting in serious harm or even death? The answer, again, a clear yes. Are there weapons and non-lethal weapons that are being developed by the military and law enforcement? Absolutely, I don't doubt that for a minute. They're, they're well known, you can, you, can, you can buy them yourself if you want. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean there's any connection between the fact that these weapons exist or are in development, depending on which ones you're talking about, um, and, and these people's symptoms. I mean, there's just no, there's no connection there. Um, uh, you know, could these things be happening? It could happen, certainly. That's not the question. The question is, is there evidence for these things? Does that mean that everyone who claims to hear voices in their head or that their insomnia is a result of a directed energy weapon is the victim of electronic harassment? Of course not. But neither can we assume that these same alleged victims are all suffering from some psychological disorder. When it comes to claims of covert electronic harassment, I'm filing this one under pending further investigation. And now, we'd like to hear what you think. You can contact us here at The Conspiracy Show through our website, www.theconspiracyshow.com. In the meantime, don't be afraid. Move over, Aphrodite. I'm coming home. Good night.